you're sitting at home slowly, painfully counting the days until next season, or you just want your skis to glide faster than your friends, now is a great time to learn how to wax and tune your skis. We're going to start with waxing because it's the simplest and least equipment intensive, but if you're tuning your skis, touching your edges or bases, waxing should be the last step. Now, why would you want to wax? It's not really that economical. It's far cheaper if you only have one set of skis to get a professional to do it. But if you own multiple skis, you're waxing regularly, or just interested in what makes a ski perform, how they behave, and what makes them glide well, and to take ownership of your ski's performance, it's a really interesting skill to learn. It's also a fascinating subject. If you're really interested in the intricacies of waxing and the chemistry behind it, have a look at what World Cup ski technicians do to skis and prepare to have your mind blown. Now the good thing is, it's not very equipment intensive. Really all you need are a well-ventilated space because waxing does give off some fumes that aren't great for you. Preferably a space that you can make a bit of a mess in um, because wax dribbles and wax flakes off when you scrape it. Something to hold your skis nice and firmly is a definite bonus. Anyone who's tried waxing uh, holding their skis just on a bench or some makeshift way can tell you how frustrating it is. The small investment of a ski vice will pay off in spades for your sanity. Lastly, you need an iron Preferably one that is designed for ski waxing that has an adjustable temperature range because these maintain a constant temperature versus a clothing iron that tends to surge and you'll notice if you try to wax with a, a clothing iron, the wax will start to smoke and burn and that effectively ruins the wax before it's even on your skis. Uh, some wax, of course. Don't get too crazy on, on what kind of wax, just uh, a universal wax from a reputable manufacturer. Don't get crazy about temperature specificity unless you want to. Your skis will perform far better with a universal wax in any condition than it will with the wrong temperature wax in the wrong conditions. Don't worry about fluorinated or race waxes. Those are for very specific conditions and really won't add any performance unless you really, really, really know what you're doing, in which case you're probably not watching me teach you how to wax. Lastly, some plexiglass scrapers, preferably nice sharp ones, and I'll show you how to keep those sharp. And lastly, a stiff nylon brush for opening the structure of your skis after the wax is scraped off. So what now? Well, you've got your ski up on your bench, whether it's in a vise or something else. Have a quick look at the base. Look for any major deformities or gouges, anything that you'd want to take care of before you apply a wax. We can talk about fixing PTEX later, but let's assume that your bases are in good condition and maybe just looking a little bit dry. We won't worry about the flatness of the base until we talk about edging. So for now, we can move ahead with waxes. Second step, take your wax. Uh, if it's a universal or a warm wax, uh, somewhere on the package, it probably says the melting temperature of the wax. If not, warm waxes, warm weather waxes start at about 100 degrees and go up from there. So set your iron, let it get nice and warm so it melts the wax. Holding your iron carefully away from you, don't burn yourself, try not to breathe any fumes that come off it. You're gonna melt a dribble of wax all the way down the skis. After you've dribbled wax all the way down the skis, the next is going to be to iron it out smooth. Now the key is to move the iron slowly enough that it melts the wax and makes it distributed into a nice ski width film, but not so slowly that you stop. Stopping the iron on the ski base can uh, damage the PTEX and can burn the wax. So the key is to constantly keep it moving with that nice wet film of wax underneath the iron. Once you have a film of wax on the skis, sit back, have a coffee, and let your skis cool. Now that the wax is cool, it's time to take it off. This may seem counterintuitive, but using a sharp plexiglass scraper, you want to remove as much wax as you can from the base. The wax that you want to keep is in the porous plastic of the base. The wax you want to remove, unless you like going very, very slowly, is all the stuff on the surface. So we're gonna use smooth strokes, holding the scraper at about a 45 degree angle. It doesn't matter whether you go tip to tail or tail to tip, or whether you push or pull. As long as you do it smoothly, use smooth strokes, remove all the wax that you can. Clearing the, the wax debris off to the side into a container for disposable. Don't try to save wax shavings for reuse because they're full of dirt. Scrape the wax right down to the base till every time you run the scraper over, you can't get any more wax. If it feels like your scraper is not doing anything or it's just moving the wax around or plowing through it, chances are it's not sharp. Now, fortunately for us, uh, most if you're working on your skis, you might have a handy tool to create a perfect 90 degree sharp edge. 
If you don't have a 90 degree bevel guide, that's okay. These can be sharpened just as easily using something to hold it against at 90 degrees and some emery cloth on a firm flat surface and just rub it back and forward to refresh that nice sharp edge. You'll be amazed how much more effectively a sharp scraper works. Once you've scraped all the wax off, if you run your scraper over, you can't get any more off when more wax is coming up. You're gonna take your nice stiff nylon brush and now running tip to tail, brush it firmly because you're trying to get all the remaining wax out of the ski structure. No ski base is perfectly flat. It, every good or well-tuned ski should have a fine structure to it that looks like lines running down it, or if it's been freshly ground, sort of a crisscross patterns. And what that helps it do is glide on the snow. We can talk about structures a little bit later. It's a deeper topic, but for now, you just need to get the excess wax out of that structure and it'll come out looking in a bit of a power form. So scrub your ski tip to tail, brush whatever came out off, have one last look to make sure you didn't miss any wax anywhere because a glob of unscraped wax on your ski will stop you dead in your tracks. The good thing about this is a wax ski will not only glide faster, but your skins will stick better. When you looked at your base before you applied the wax, if you noticed that it was dirty or full of that crud that you tend to pick up when you're spring skiing, if anyone has been fortunate enough to be spring skiing, chances are you're gonna to wanna to clean the base before you put, uh, put fresh wax into it. There are commercially available base cleaners. They're uh, you know, citrus based or solvent based. My opinion is that those are terrible for your base and shouldn't be used unless you're a professional and know what you're doing. The best way to clean a base is with wax. It's called hot scraping. To hot scrape, we're gonna apply wax the same way we did before, dribble it down the base, iron it out nice and flat, and make sure there's a nice warm film of wax on the ski. And as soon as you set down your iron, pick up a scraper and scrape that fresh hot wax off. It'll come off like scraping butter off your ski, but what it does is the ski, the wax that's made its way into the pores is still kind of gooey and liquid and will pull up with the other wax, pulling any contaminants up out of the ski. So now your skis uh, are nicely waxed, the bases are clean, they look nice and fast. Well, you have months and months to practice because uh, this could be the only contact we have for our skis for the next little while.